Hey friends, so in the, the last video um, I mentioned and showed you uh, the Brave Little Toaster, uh, our 1950s toasting friend. And in that video I mentioned that I had um, a 1950s heater. So I thought actually yeah, why not just do something slightly different from vacuum cleaners, just for a brief second. We've seen the toaster, let's, ha let's now have a look at um, another piece of crazy 1950s tech. But Steve, I hear you cry, how can a, a 1950s heater be interesting? Well, it, this one is, I would agree with you, most of them probably are not, a heater is a heater. Some of them from the 50s and 60s had a particularly stunning look to them. Um, I can remember um, maybe late 60s, early 70s, these uh, crazy big round heaters. Um, this one was, uh, well, the one that I've got in mind was a um, radiation heater and a convector heater so it was like a dual purpose but it was really thin it was about that that thick and it was just like a huge great big circle with um, this almost like a laser gun on the front and it was in orange as well it was god it was so 60s slash early 70s it was mental um, but I've always quite liked heaters I find them quite interesting um, they're really useful as well certainly here in the UK when it gets so cold in winter we have all our modern heaters now, which are, uh, you know, they're air purifiers, they're fan heaters, they're air heaters, they oscillate, they go up and down, you know, they do everything. But back in the day, i.e. The, the 1950s, it was very rare to find something that was actually dual purpose. And this heater that I've got to show you right now is dual purpose. It has a party trick up its sleeve. So let me show you the machine. Here it is. It's, it's so cool. I love it. Um, it's funny. It's like this is actually one of my most favourite um, machines that I own. Uh, it's my god. It must be what sixty-five years old, and it still works, and it works perfectly. I actually use this. I use this little machine. Um, I have it in my sort of uh, front office room there when I'm working in the winter. I, ju I just put this on, and it's. It's just it's the perfect amount of heat to keep me warm whilst I'm working. Uh, it's brilliant. Now, when I first got this, I thought to myself, mm, it's a very odd shape. You can like kind of understand that it would be like this. It would have the legs, obviously, um, and it would have a couple of carry handles on the top, obviously. But then you look on the back and you've got these two extra like protruding bits here. And you think, well, what's that for? That's really weird. Why did they put those there? And it wasn't until I looked it up on, uh, I think it was Google, that I worked out what these back legs are actually for. So before I dive into that, I just want to show you the machine working. And it's got a, also it's got a little um, ratings plate here on the back. So I'm going to read you the ratings plate. So it's uh, Belling and Co. Limited, Enfield, Middlesex, England. So this is back in back in the day when things were actually made in the UK and made flipping well too. Uh, I mean, maybe not up to the to today's standard of electrical safety, but um, it was the fifties. Nobody really mattered. Sorry, nobody really cared about safety. They were just stuffing as many things as they could possibly find into as many sockets as they had. It's mad. It is quite amazing. There were more fires and deaths caused by machines like this actually you do have to be very careful with them um anyway back to the rating plate volts 232 40 watts 2000 so it's a two kilowatt fire list number so no model number but a list number of 602 and then the best bit about it is the name it's <laughs> it's the dinky it's the belling Dinky, how cool is that? It, it's got a little name. It's a little belly dinky. <laughs> I just think that's amazing. So yeah, um, and it has this really you know standard 1950s cloth coloured flex. It's not very thick at all. You think that that the machine's drawing two kilowatts through that? That is 
an incredible amount of current draw. Two kilowatts through there, um, and it might, yeah, that's why you would never leave this alone. You would never leave it on and go out because by God, something's going to happen. Now I'm just going to turn it on a sec. It's plugged in over here. I'm going to turn it on so you can see it working. There you go. So there's a um, selector switch here. I don't know if you can see that. I turn it around a bit. This is, yeah, just there. So this switch toggles between one and two kilowatts. Now hopefully you'll be able to see the, yes, you just about see the um, element there lighting up, glowing nice and hot. Um, it, 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 as I say, it produces a surprising amount of heat for such a small machine. It gets surprisingly warm. The whole body gets warm, actually. Um, if you have it on 2000 watts for any length of time, you have to wait for it to cool down before you can pick it up by any of its handles because it just the heat just goes through into the metal of the machine. So hopefully there you can see, yeah, so that's um, um, section one on. So that's now drawing a thousand watts. Now if you flick this switch down, like so, like a proper 50s clunk, it's amazing. The whole machine just resonates, it's brilliant. This energizes the top panel as well. So you get a two kilowatt draw. Um, now this is terrifying, frankly, that it's drawing so much current and it's, I, it's really hot on my face. I, I'm not even in front of it, but I can feel the heat just coming off it and it's really, really quite something. It, this is obviously um, radiation heat. It's not convecting or anything. There's nothing coming out from the top. So this kind of heat is very good for warming you um, it's not like a infrared heat or anything like that, but uh, it warms the room quite quite well, um, but it also will warm a human because we can obviously feel the feel the heat on our skin and it warms us up. I'm going to put this back into one kilowatt mode. That switch is quite stiff um, because I, <laughs> I can't look at it because it's, <laughs> it's really quite hot. Whew, okay. So, yeah, now I did mention to you that this machine has a trick. Now, back in the 50s, houses were quite small, people were living in flats, um, they didn't have a lot of room. So, Belling ingeniously came up with this dinky heater to have a party trick. And the party trick involves the legs at the back. So I'm going to turn the machine around now, like so. I just need to remember that it's still on. <clears throat> and I'm going to fold it down like this. And now I've got a lot of heat in my face. <laughs> so, there we go. Have you guessed yet what this can do? It's perfectly flat now on the surface. Bear in mind there is no temperature control here. Um, it's either on or off. You could have two elements on or one on. And the party trick of this heater is this. I've got something else here, look. It becomes an electric stove. How amazing is that? And I didn't realize this until I found some uh, documentation online. It's like a, a, a dinky leaflet to show you how you can do this. I did, it, that bit blows my mind. Um, I have to turn it off, I'm sorry, I have to turn it off because it's so hot. There's a lot of heat coming into my face, two seconds. Wow, well, yeah, that is getting hot now. Um, yeah, so there you go. It's a portable heater and a portable stove top. You can fry your eggs on it. You can heat your lounge and then you can fry your eggs on it. How amazing is that? It's such a clever idea. Why don't more companies think of things like this? Oh no, that's not very hot, no, it's good. I think it would probably take quite some time for it to have any effect on the contents of the saucepan. Because the saucepan is, let me bring it back, it's a long way away from those elements there. You can see there's probably a good three inches six centimeters or so 
distance between the elements and um, the, the saucepan. So a lot of the heat is escaping around. I can Im I imagine that if you were using this in your kitchen, um, your kitchen would be incredibly hot. You probably have to have it on two kilowatts, um, both elements running to have any kind of effect. And you'd really want the largest possible saucepan you could find um, in order to use it in this mode. But it will do it. And that's the most wonderful thing. You can have fried eggs on your dinky heater. Absolutely amazing. So there we go, that's just a little um, short video just because I really wanted to show you this heater. Um, the toaster was the catalyst to this, uh, brave little toaster here. So I can now actually go off to my kitchen. I can take these two with me if I change the plug on the toaster. I can have 1950s toast and 1950s fried egg and probably burn my house down at exactly the same time. So that would be fantastic. So. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a slightly different video than um, normal. Uh, it, it, this was kind of like one for me, I, I suppose, because I just really wanted to show you this because I think it is so cool and so amazing. Um, don't, don't forget to um, comment, uh, su subscribe and like because it really, really helps me out and I appreciate every single one of you who do that for me. Um, and if you've ever seen anything like this, anything like this uh, heater, or, you know, um, if you've seen one previously or your parents had one, maybe uh, they did cooking on it. That'd be so cool. Um, yeah. Leave us a comment and let us know. But until then, until the next time, see you soon. Take care. Bye.